Hey, what's up? My name is Nick and welcome to Anchor Reviews. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can capture the screen of your Mac using one of the best softwares I think exists out there, which is ScreenFlow. Uh, if you just want to record your screen without any software and the stuff that already works on your Mac, then you just press Command Shift and 5 and that is going to bring up your screen recording options. You can see that below that you have the option to record the entire screen or the selection of the screen. You also have some options uh, which allow you to save to the desktop or uh, start a timer before you record and then also have the selection of the microphone and then some options. And then once you press record, you're going to start recording. And if you want to stop, just look at the top. There's going to be a stop button there. So that's how to use QuickTime easy. So if recording your desktop was the only thing that you needed, then you don't need an external application. Then why am I recommending ScreenFlow? Well, it's because it can do a lot, a lot more. It's not only a recorder, but it's also a video editor. So let me jump to my computer and show you what I mean. Real quick about what is ScreenFlow. It's an app made by the company called Telestream and it's a huge company. It's used by Apple, CNN, Fox and Sony and much more. They're focused on Mac specific apps for both video recording and streaming. And they also make some enterprise level of hardware. I just wanted to say that it's a huge behemoth of a company. But enough about Telestream. Let's start with the first part, video capture. All right, hello and welcome to ScreenFlow. The first time you start the application is going to come up with this panel. You can go to new recording and from here you have a few options to select. You can record your desktop, which is of course the most common scenario. If you have more than one monitor, you can select over here to choose to select another monitor. Then if you connect an iOS device like your iPad or iPhone, you can choose it from here. And if you want to record a video, you can select yourself from there. That's me. Hey, hello. So here I have my CamLink capture card plugged in, but if you want to use your webcam or a different capture card, you can select it from over here. And if available, you can select the resolution. Then over here, you can select your microphone input. And if you need to adjust it slightly, you can do it so here. So if I go a bit too close, you can see it starts clipping. And that way you can see exactly how far from a distance from microphone I should be. You can also record the computer audio. Then you're given the option to select a portion of the screen or to just record the full screen over here. All right, let's take a small little break. As you can see, ScreenFlow allows you to capture multiple devices at the same time. I have two screens recording at the same time. I have my iPhone being recorded. And yes, in case you're wondering, you can set the camera app and use it as a webcam. I also have this source being recorded and my microphone. That's a lot of things to record all at the same time. So let's go have a look at how it fared. We're going to go ahead and stop the recording and ScreenFlow is going to import all those tracks into the video editing application. And this is what ScreenFlow's editor looks like. As you can see, it imported all four of the tracks, one, two, three, and four, one of which has the audio attached to it. So we're going to detach the audio and now we have five tracks. Each track can be individually selected. It can be moved around and rescaled. And if you once again look at the timeline here, we can select one or multiple tracks. We can move them around. We can also trim them if we grab them from the sides and we can even merge them to have a transition in between them. So let's give it a play and see what we came up with. Hi there, this is a recording of two screens, one capture card, one microphone and an iPhone. And just in case if I'm moving too fast, let me break it down for you. I'm going to zoom in here a couple of times and we're going to take a step by step. You see here from the moment the video starts till about half a second, this is empty space and then the video and the audio starts playing as well. Then at about the one and a half second mark, the second screen starts showing up and moving forward, you can see that over here is the time when the transition between, I'm going to put it up here, from the smartphone till the screen starts. So let's observe the transition. One fades and the other appears. And these are of course the most basic features which almost any video editor out there has. <laughs> but if I was to make a video covering all of the features which ScreenFlow has, believe me, it will take me a very, very long time. But instead, let me cover the basics. So far, we've talked about the canvas, so the video area, and then the timeline. And now let's look at the functionality or the nine icons which allow you to manipulate the videos. And they are as follow. Video, audio, video motion, screen recording, callout, 
touch callout, annotations, text, and media library. So let us start with the very first one on the list, which is video. Video, just like the title suggests, allows us to control video tracks. Currently, all the options are grayed out because we must first select a video track in the timeline. Once selected, you're going to see that there's going to be a bounding box which appears around your video source, and eight points which we can click and drag to rescale the image. You can then click anywhere on the image to reposition it. And over here, there is a center and a little dot coming off it, which allows you to rotate the image. If you look at the settings part, you're going to see that you have the option to scale. Let's, for example, go with 50%. Below that, you're also going to find three buttons, uh, scale to fit, stretch to fit, which in our case are going to do the exact same thing, and then also a reset scale, which is going to bring it back to 100% of its original size. Below that, you have the position and X, Y, and Z rotations. You also have the opacity slider. Clicking on the arrow of cropping reveals some sliders, which allows you to crop the image. Below that, you have the option to add a reflection and to round off the corners. Additionally, you have the option to drop shadow and adjust its settings. Below that, you have color controls of saturation, brightness, and contrast, and video filters which are a bit beyond the scope of this video. All right, so let's take everything which we just learned now and apply it practically. We're going to take this screen over here and drop it down to the lower right corner. That way, I'm going to have the desktop over here and me, myself, in the corner. Hey! So let's jump to ScreenFlow's video editor. And if you are capturing both your screen and a video source, like your webcam, for example, then ScreenFlow is going to give you this layout by default. But we want to start with the video being full screen and then move over to the lower right corner. Let us select the video tab. Then we can select the layer that we want to edit. And the first button that we're going to press is scale to fit. That way it's going to fill up the entire screen. Then I'm going to press the spacebar on the keyboard and let the video play for a few seconds, and then I'm going to press the spacebar again to pause. And at this point, I would like to start the transition. ScreenFlow calls it action, so I'm going to press this plus action button over here. All right, now I'm going to zoom into the clip, and as you can see, it created this yellow highlighted area. The best way to understand how an action works is your clip is now divided into three parts. You have the before, the after, and the duration of the transition. So if I was to click anywhere before this transition happens and say, for example, scale down the video, you're gonna see that if I press play, you will see the transition play out into full screen. Likewise, if I was to scale it down over here and in the before, I'm going to instead scale it up. If I press play, now it scales down. So let's apply this and make it look like our example. To start, let's go to the before and make it full screen, then click anywhere in the after part, and then we can scale it down, put it into the corner as we want it to. Then I'm going to add some cropping. So I'm going to crop left and also right. I'm gonna crop a bit from the top and a bit from the bottom. As a matter of fact, I want to make it a bit bigger and scale it down a bit over here. Right, also I can have the choice to add a reflection, which looks nice, why not? And I'd like to round off the corners a little bit. All right, so let's go to the before and press play and see how the transition works out. Not bad, but I think it was too fast. So I'm going to select the clip again, then I'm going to select this transition, and I'm simply going to drag it out, and that's going to make the transition longer. So let's play, press play once again. Perfect. You can also repeat the same effect multiple times. So I'm going to add another action and I'm going to drag this video over here. And let's see how this looks. Toasty. All right, it was important for me to take a moment to explain how this works because the rest of the features that ScreenFlow has work on the same mechanics. You can either adjust the video on your canvas or you can play around with the settings and add the actions. Now let's skim through the rest of the features which ScreenFlow has to offer, the next one being sound. All right, so if you have a video and audio track, they're usually combined together. So I can right click and say detach audio for the audio to have its own separate track. Now we can have a look at the settings. We have the same action system, so you can add an action, scroll to the beginning, make the volume zero and press play, and you can see the volume increases to 100%, effectively creating a fade. 
Then you have my absolutely most favorite feature of them all, smooth volume levels. Just have a look at what it does to the track. If your audio is too low, it will raise it, and if it's too high, it's going to lower it, creating a perfect sounding normalized track. Another pro feature is ducking, which I'm going to demonstrate by recording a new sound. Microphone test, one, two. Right, then I'm going to add some music. Microphone test, one, two. And now I'm going to turn on the docking and see the difference. Microphone test, one, two. As you could hear, whenever there's voice present, the music actually lowers down its volume automatically. You also have some effects to play around with. So for example, you can pretend that you're in a large hall. Microphone test, one, two. And if you hear some microphone interference or some hissing in the background, you can click remove background noise and that's going to get rid of the problem. By this point in the video, you now know how to record and capture multiple sources of video, edit and adjust both video and audio tracks. And within the short 10 minutes, you now know how to capture and create your own videos. There are just a few more things you might need to know in order to get started, so let's open up the media library. This is how the video library is going to look, and by default, it stores all the video clips which you have recorded. And if you're going to record a new clip, the app is going to ask you if you want to import it into your existing project. And then you can go ahead and drag it into your timeline. Hello there, I'm recording number two. I was just imported from the media library. You can always add a new recording by pressing this plus sign and saying add recording. You can also choose to add files. Alternatively, you can drag in any image, audio or video file directly to the media library or to the timeline itself. And speaking of the timeline, in the lower left, you have five tools to choose from. But to be honest, I never use anything else than select because zoom is replaced by buttons plus and minus. Instead of the hand tool, I simply use this slider over here. The blade tool is replaced by the letter T on the keyboard, which allows you to trim. I pity the fool who messes with Mr. T. And although it is possible to use track selection, I found it's always much easier just to click and press shift and select all the tracks that you needed to move. And if you double click on any single layer, a clip inspector will pop up, which allow you to control the speed. You can either speed it up or slow it down. You can also go ahead and play the clip in reverse if you wanted to. And once you're finished with your video editing, you just go to file, then press export or command E. And using the default automatic settings, you can go ahead and click export. Or if you prefer, you can change the settings manually. Congratulations. Excellent. If you have been following this tutorial, you now know how to use the ScreenFlow app. Now, I know I haven't mentioned all the features there are, but this video is already getting a little bit long. But if you want to pick up a copy of this popular software, I'm going to be putting down some links in the description below. Now, ScreenFlow doesn't usually do discounts, promos or coupons, but I'm going to be trying to strike up a deal with them. So check out in the description if I manage to get a good deal with them too. I hope you found this tutorial useful and you can check out my channel to see if I actually made part two of this series. Don't forget to give me a like and a possible subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.